Uh, my early influences um, playing, um, I really started out as a drummer, really. And um, I started out as a drummer and I was doing lots of uh, gigs around Manchester and then I got a job in a music, quite a really large music shop in Manchester. And then I started to meet more people and listening to lots of different kinds of music. And then I discovered percussionists more. Fergus? How did I get into it? I just always wanted to hit things, I think. Um, you know, I just never wanted to do anything else, to be honest. Mm. And uh, same thing, I wanted to be a drummer. When I, was, I went to two concerts when I was, when I was young. I went to see um, Queen, and I remember Roger Taylor coming out front with his little bass drum and a tambourine and doing a kind of quasi-unplugged thing, which really appealed to me. The other gig I went to was Buddy Rich um, oh, wow. at the Croydon Fairfield Halls, and those two things, I think, set me on the road to, to ruin, really. I mean, I mean to, uh, <laughs> to uh, yeah, to what I'm doing. And you, Pete? Yeah, well, I started going, I, it, I was into the punk thing, you know, I was yeah, a late starter okay. at 19, and then I was walking past a drum shop one day and saw an advert in the in the window, so I went and had drum lessons, and then, right. you know, got into that, and then discovered percussion by chance, you know, discovered tabla and the whole lit world of Indian rhythms. And, and, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that, once you, you know, as you know, as we all know, you know, yeah. once you get into that sort of thing, it's like, that's a whole lifetime. Yeah, yeah it is a whole yeah. lifetime yeah. study. Luckily, yeah. I'm really old, so... so. Yeah. <laughs> Miles, how about you? Um, listening to my dad's records and picking out the... Initially listening to the, the, the drums, but then starting to want to understand what was happening in the background, the little noises that were going on. I mean, I actually started as an alto player. And, Did you? And, wow. Yeah, and, but I was sort of like smacking it and hitting it rather than <laughs> blowing it. You know, I kept you know wanting to do see what the keys would do, but yeah, more and more listening to you know Art Blakey records and whatever and the Latin stuff that my dad would play, and I, I was like, what are the other things that are working around the drums? So That's that kind of was my, you know, I was like, I want to know what that is. Yeah, so that kind of got me going. The weird thing is about me is I'm, my mum and dad the same for me. You said saying about your mum and dad's records. My mum and dad um, used to play a lot of um, Motown and. Earth, Wind and Fire, so mm. on, you know, on a Sunday morning, I remember getting up and listening to that, that would wake me up, and I'd always listen, and the, the, the weird thing is when you're young and you always check who's, who's on the album covers, mm. it always seemed to be more or less the same kind of players, you know, people like Paulino de Costa, you know, so it was Paulino de Costa or Ralph MacDonald or, yeah, mm, yeah, or yeah. you know, all those, those, those guys, Eddie Bongo Brown, they always seemed to be the same kind of people on those records and that's what I sort of aspired to want it to be. Absolutely. You know, well, we didn't have any music when I was a kid. Really? Yeah, nothing. Actually nothing wow. till till I got into the punk thing. That was yeah. my first kind of exposure to any music. Well, so I was kind of like a you know Amazing that being a punk thing though and then yeah, turned come. into an Indian thing. Exactly. Yeah. Is, that's you know. left field. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Really is. I think it's good to have, you know to have an open mind. I think it's one of the things that bonds us as percussionists. You know, is mm. this creative, open mind approach to? Yeah, absolutely. Everything yeah. is potentially percussion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just like a huge yeah. vast world. Yeah, it's never ending. I know it's a it's a nightmare trying to play it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of worms. Yeah. yeah. What appealed to me was was taking up percussion instruments because I, I was surrounded by really good drummers. And I wanted to play along with them. So um, to understand, I think that there's a lot of drummers that, that think they can play percussion. And when you get into that, playing percussion, picking holes and space in between what a drummer's doing, it becomes a whole different thing. And, um, and for me, I just got, it was a great opportunity because I got to play with loads of great drummers, you know, and I still do, you know, I get to play and I'm playing percussion, you know. So even though I play a little bit of kit still, I'm known as a percussionist because and it's great because I get to play with all my friends and and people that influence me. You know, mm. what about what about you, Miles? Who do you think yeah, I'd say that the well? same thing. I, mm. I was kind of fascinated at how I was going to work with a drummer. I mean, yeah, I was listening to both, but I went down the percussionist path initially. But um, you know, I wanted to find a way to complement the drummer. I mean, I know there's, could go. Uh, there's, there's more to that, but yeah. but just learning to find the spaces and, and, and yeah, hanging out with great drummers and understanding what they're doing. I kind of knew I was going to head towards the, the kit as well. Yeah. So I thought, you know, what, what, what better way? Yeah. So, yeah. I was, a, I was a bit of a hermit, really, you know. Mm. <laughs> I guess I did the drum set thing and then I kind of got into the Indian thing and mm. I literally just focused on that for six years, you know. That, and so it was quite a long time into my development that I started, um, you know, working extensively with, with uh, you know, 
other percussionists mm. in in the way that you would in the West because in the Indian thing is a lot of unison stuff. So if you get mm. a group of tabla players or whatever together, mm. they play unison parts together, mm. not like the interlocking stuff that, that you find with yeah. either between a drum set player and a percussionist or, you know, groups of groups of percussionists. Yeah. What about you, mm. Fergus? I always I think I was more kind of into drummers that were very percussion based. You know, so I was kind of really into Bill Bruford when he was doing mm. a lot of that kind of, and he had unusual setups. See, I remember he had a table full of Simmons pads. Mm. They're all tuned melodically. He used to play like across it. Really. Yeah, mm. and he, the, the guitarist used to stand on the other side and used to play across each other. It was very visually entertaining as well. And mm. Stuart Copeland I was into, who was obviously a very percussive drummer and full of offbeat rhythms and you know, different types of sounds, a huge dynamic within the kit, which always kind of appealed to me as well. Mm. Um, but people like Aieto and, you know, and, and then I, I looked to people like Danny Cummings, people like that, who had a lot of fantastic pop gigs at the time. And I thought, well, that's a way out. You know, I can become a pop star without being a pop star. You know, I can travel around, yeah. travel around the world, make loads of money and uh, meet lots of nice women and uh, <laughs> drink too much. And it, and it worked, yeah. <laughs> I mean, growing, grow, grow, growing. Once you moved on, yeah. To yeah. No, no, I haven't. I'm still on that. There's a lifetime in that. <laughs> I won't mind, but I've been on tour with him, and he hardly drinks when he goes out. Anyway, um, I think for me as well, the same thing. You know, growing up, I, we, I was totally inspired by um, uh, Louis Jardim, Danny Cummings. Uh, everything that came out on record in in London seemed to have. Uh, Louis Jardim, Danny Cummings, Miles on it. Frank Ricotti. Frank Ricotti, certainly. Yeah. Ray Cooper. Ray Cooper. You know, Ray, so so uh, for yeah. Westernised music, you know, I mean, I remember uh, having a listening, somebody gave me an audio CD of Miles playing, doing loops with Danny, oh. you know, which yeah, really that, got yeah. me into wanting to, to play those parts. And, and I'd play yeah. along with them with my yeah. drums and I'd really understand uh, some of the, you know, how, how things would lock in. So. For me, you know, I'm, I'm, thing is I'm three of the three, of the three influences together. right here for me, really. Mm. You know, Ditto. you know, Ditto. absolutely. I think we're all watching each other, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's always something to learn from what's happening over there. Yeah, yeah. And that's the yeah. thing. Isn't it? How it slots together, you know, how you know, even whether it's two percussionists, three percussionists, or mm. you know, a drum set player and a percussionist, how the parts slot together with frequency or density, and, yeah. mm. you know, rhythm choice, rhythm variety, or straight. You know, there's all totally. so many. Permutations, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. and colours, you know, mm. um, which is the way I see sort of see things in colours a lot of the time as well. Nice, you know, when I'm when I'm playing something, or if I'm gonna, if they ask me to do some overdubs, I see things in colours rather than see things in in sounds. So sort of so, certainly instruments reminds me of a colour. You know, maybe that's just me. But there you go. Mm, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Moving on from that, um, fir first gig, first sort of. Gig? What did you sort of do first gig? My, was a, it was a punk band, smashing my drums up at the end of it Fantastic. and the whole, you know, shebang. Fantastic. One groove at the various boof chat, boof chat at numerous <laughs> different tempos. That's all, I know. <laughs> That's all I know to do. I anyway. consider that versatile at the yeah, time, to be yeah. honest with you. But, yeah. but that was one of the things that was so different back then than is now. If you wanted to be in a band, there was that kind of new wave punk ethos yeah. that anybody could pick up an instrument and yeah. play. Yeah. Mm. You know, with no knowledge, you could just you just sat down and and the fact that you didn't really know what you were doing, you kind of listened to music and you'd invariably make mistakes. Yeah. But that would maybe become part of your character. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, rather than kind of this kind of. I mean, YouTube is great for for many reasons, but you often, if you want to learn how a fill was done, you just YouTube it, and there's like endless amounts of people showing you how to break it down, and you're yeah. instantly doing it correctly, which perhaps takes some of the individuality out of it. I yeah, and the personalities. You know, yeah. The thing about you go back to you look at players like Budgie and yeah, no, the guy who did yeah. the first Adam and the Ants album, and yeah, all those, yeah. they were so unique, such unique. Mm. Um, no, that's right. Personality players. Yeah. Things that get ironed out a little bit with technology. It's true. And, um, yeah. Mm. What was your first, first sort of gig, Miles? Um, well, I mean, I've got literally my first school gig, you know, at like oh, yeah. sort of 12. Yeah. And I was the one standing there and thinking, I'm not even going to be able to walk on the stage. Um, <laughs> terrified. Um, but then the rest of the band, the drummer threw up, you know. Oh, really? So one of those ones. So that's the kind of school <laughs> experience. But I did it and I got through it. But. Um, I can't think what my first, those wine bars when I was about 15, 16, I was doing sort of Latin gigs and stuff like that. Um, that percussion or drums? Percussion, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all, all percussion up until about 19 or 20. And then I, you know, I was 
quietly trying to shed the drums and get it together because basically a couple of very dear friends were kicking my butt saying, that's what I was saying earlier, you know, they've just like, you know, play, learn some two, chair soon. <laughs> well, yeah, do learn some two and four, yeah, yeah. have it in, I can call you for other work, you know, expand yeah. your, your vocabulary and also my fascination with how I'm going to work with the drummer and kind of explore that by actually playing the two mm. and the four and how I'm going to yeah. work around that, have a bit more understanding of what they're doing, which I yeah. think we should all do. You know, I try and do that with singers, you know, try and actually, I can't sing, but I will sing through a song sometimes and just yeah. try and understand what that's about yeah, and course, actually yeah. what my role is. You know, it's sort of, yeah, I've learned sure. all those things because yeah. of wanting to play drums and understand what a drummer's having to do. So The interesting yeah. thing about that as well is that it's, you know, if, you, if you're just focused on one instrument, like, you know, either drums or percussion mm. or whatever, mm. um, you, you don't necessarily hear it from the outside. I remember when I first started putting projects together um, where I wasn't playing drum set and realized that actually, and that was the thing with Bill Bruford actually, right. is that I d during the, you know, writing and performance, you know, moments, you didn't really focus at all what the drum set player was playing technically, because mm. it was all about what was being generated with the music, yeah. which is a different abstract than, you know, the oh, being, of course, yeah. you know, so completely focused just on one element of music. And, you know, what you're saying there is like learning and, and taking part in different elements of the music making mm. spectrum broadens your whole approach Absolutely. To, to, the, yeah. to the instrument, whatever instrument it's Especially you can try and understand what others are doing in the room, you know, like that just starts to open your ears. Yeah. What's my role? What can I do to expand the music and appreciate what everyone else's role is, what they're having to do to make this move forward, you know? Mm. Yeah. And maybe that's more, more appropriate for percussion because it's, your role isn't always concrete. Exactly. You know, you're if you're floating. a drummer, you're yeah. invariably going to play one and two and yeah. three, four. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you're often trying to slot yourself in and find mm. where there is space and what the music needs and what it's lacking, how you can enhance it. Well, I started and listening uh, closely to guitarists, particularly because yeah. of the percussive element. I'm like, well, okay, yeah. my instrument's not a million miles no, away no, from right. guitar. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm like same, in studios, yeah. I'm sure you've all had the same feeling. It's like, Absolutely. what am I interrupting? What you know, mm. you can play a conga part and you realise there's a really nice guitar part. Well, I've got to kind of maybe work around that yeah. a little bit. But yeah. it's only when I start to think that way, having played a bit of kit and yeah. realising. Yeah. You know, kind of and like what frequencies mind. are going to work within that? Yeah, of course. exactly. Yeah. yeah, and leaving space. And leaving space. And finding the space actually, mm. finding the yeah. gaps where yeah. you can, where you can play. What, what about you, Fergus? Your first gig. First gig uh, was probably at school, but I think a lot of the gigs I got initially would came out of the back of Melody Maker. You know, I, I, I which was the kind of go-to place. Yeah. For, yeah. For, um, yeah. I remember. Um, auditioning for Zig Zig Sputnik, do you remember? Did you? Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. And not, uh, not, uh, you know, I went in the room, there's just no, a, that's kick, an exclusive. a kick drum and a, and, a, and a snare drum and a hi-hat, and that was all there was, and I was about 15, you know. Wow. And I went in there and they just put on this track at huge West volume. Bandex. Of course, yeah. yeah great. <laughs> Hair was, and, and, you know, played the track, and they came out and they said to me, you must have had a troubled childhood the way you were hitting those drums. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I didn't get the gig, you know. But, uh, but one of the first professional gigs I did get was out of the back of a living room. It was a band oh, wow. I and I kind of, you know, just went from there. When Wait. I came to London, it was our melody mate was on strike for like nine <laughs> months. It's like really annoying. <laughs> So that was the end of I think it was I mean, just yeah. a look at the back of Melody Maker for equipment as well. Yeah. Mm. I mean, my first set of congas came out of the back of Melody Maker, and I remember um, answering an advert and going to Notting Hill Gate, and uh, the congas belonged to Mick Jones from The Clash. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, he was yeah. in this smoke-filled studio in the basement. <laughs> they kind of opened the door, and I couldn't see him, you know. Yeah. But I walked in, and oh, Mr. Jones, go and set of congas, please. Cool. Yeah, so, wow. Yeah, it's funny. Fantastic. <laughs> what make were they? Metal. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Metal. Alan Sharp, yeah. I mean, I mean gear-wise, uh, the first congas I got was, uh, were a present from, uh, from the very dear George Frederick. Oh, yeah. Um, when he worked at Pearl. And uh, he, he uh, was, it was Afro percussion. And I got a gig, I got a gig um, playing percussion in a house band um, at the Ritz. Um, so it was a, the house band uh, was uh, by Mecca, uh, a top, I think it was, top rank then it was like working every Thursday Friday Saturday night every weekend so I didn't really have any social life but I was a lot younger then anyway and um, playing in the house band and we, what we did was three sets and it was the highest chart climber so whatever we did that weekend we had a great house band great great musicians in the band and great singers and we just 
covered. So we did a load of Motown, a load of everything, you know. And, and then it, it was just a it was just a free for all. It was like a cattle market. So basically, I needed some drums, and uh, and George uh, very kindly at the time um, said, "I'll send you some drums up. See what you think of them." And I was uh, playing Afro Afro congas. Um, okay. I wish I still had them actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I really don't know what happened to them, but um, yeah. But they were great, you know. And uh, bless him for, for for actually sending me, you know, and believing in me and going, I'll just send you them. You know? Yeah, it's sure. a real yeah, kick yeah. of energy, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw him recently as well and thanked him. You know, I saw him and oh, thanked nice. him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think he didn't know what I was talking about, but it was a long time. Ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My my first percussion instrument was a set of tablers. Yeah, wow. yeah. I went down the straight in at the deep end. Yeah, 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 really, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Well, that, was, that was the first percussion instrument I learned. You know, yeah, so amazing. Yeah. I was never, you know, I was never thinking of getting into percussion. It's just, you know, it mm. happened by accident, really. And um, it, originally, just to complement my drum set playing, but then just got totally into it. And also, the guy next door had just been, you know, let out of. Um, the mental hospital, and um, if I drummed, he would come and throw stuff at the window and <laughs> go just like completely crazy at me. Oh, well. So I was feared for my life, to wow. be honest with you. And so I could practice the tabla, you know. Okay. All right. wow. so I remember going off to right. Southall, getting the, getting the drums, car broke down, six hours waiting for the AA, <laughs> finally got home, and you know, with the tabla, you Was that Alcoholics them. Anonymous? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get, you get the, uh, you know, you tune them with a the hammer, you know, because you, you play tabla. Um, and then you, with the bass tabla, you kind of go around with the end of the hammer and just, uh, yeah, da -da, straight through the head. Oh. Hammer. After I got home, you know, wow. ten hour day. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so role, role as a, of a percussionist in a band, um, within your band setting and your and your experiences, Miles. Whew. Uh, where do I start? Um, well, again, back to what we were saying earlier. I, I guess trying to complement the drummer. And then take that to the next level, trying to complement the music, um, which is also ultimately the aim, um, and, and finding a way to, I think, give 99% of the time a forward motion to the groove, yeah. and lift a chorus or cover a section where maybe there's a breakdown or something, and you kind of find a pattern that will sort of suit. So that's uh, one element of, of the role for me. Mm. I kind of think in, in uh, you know, Exactly that, but also in terms of you know whether I'm going to do something that's interlocking or you know or you know unison or, or stacking, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Um, and also I, I <coughs> kind of listen for frequencies of of what a drummer's playing. So if it's a real tom tom sort of thing, low frequencies with the with the drum set or with the music generally, actually, maybe not even drum set at all, but um, try and just think in different different frequencies. So top mm. end stuff might might work. You know, if it's more of a standard kind of drum set groove type thing, then mm. stuff in the middle is going to work mm. pretty well, depending on how busy the hi-hat is. I might go to some top end things. Mm. And, but frequencies, and then, and then like you were talking about colours, but literally, yeah. you know, colours of... Because one of the things that I find is how much the listener is thrown, you know, when there's just a sound, like those bells you've got, for example, yeah. you know, yeah. that sort of sound that the listener is thrown, and yeah. they're almost taken to a different place in the world where you hear, not necessarily, you know, in an, an ethnic location, but, uh, you know, a bell might just take you to, I don't know, a beach somewhere or, mm. uh, mm. you know, yeah, definitely st stuck up a palm tree or something. You know? mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of people, if you don't, I hope you don't mind me saying, but I know, I know that you obviously you do so much of the Indian stuff and you do so much online with Tabla and Kanju, but I know that you do, which isn't really covered that much. You do a lot of sessions really in the pop world as well, which mm. isn't. How do, would you approach that differently to you know working with a producer who then would you take all your sounds to to uh, to a session mm. and then work you know within a pop setting? Yeah, well I find I, I get as much information as I can. Yeah, because ideally you want to be as effective with as smaller compact set up as you can yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's an important thing because otherwise you know you're confused by the array of choice yeah. as is the the, the client you know. Um, I think it's changed actually over the last, for me personally, mm. over the last, you know, 30 years, you know, you, I think certainly in the pop world, you're more inclined to do um, less performance and more loop based approach to things, mm. Mm. Um, which is a shame because I, I like much prefer the idea of even you get, the whole you know, yeah. 
half a minute into a song and then they'll stop you and you know, okay yeah. that's enough we got that yeah sure i did an album rec i did an album recording once and it was the percussion was the first thing to go on there and yeah. all they did was play a load of click tracks at different tempos yeah give me eights give me sixties mm. give me give me some bar give me inversions of that and yeah. do no displacements and that was it and then once when i consequently heard the album later on i was like Wow, if I'd known the music was like that, that's not what not I would have played. Yeah, 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 I could yeah. have been far more musically effective. Mm. Yeah. You know, but I think there's a lot in dynamics, there's a lot in um, kind of hocketing, if you like, or playing in between what the drummer plays mm. and not playing on their, not stepping on their feet. So if the, if the drummer's got a load of crash cymbals, 16, 18 inch crash cymbals, you don't go along with a load of 16, 18. You have yeah. different options. And, you know, often I do fills before the drummer is likely to do a fill. So I might, yeah, you know, exactly. fill on the bar yeah. before the last bar of yeah. the section. Yeah. or just afterwards to try and avoid what they're doing. Yeah. I think that's a positive that we all play kit and you sort of feel where the drummer's going to play for yeah, exactly. and you can yeah. then uh, work either side or sort of uh, not play where they're, where they're playing mm -hmm. or not pl play at all really where they're playing a fill. You know, I think that comes with because we're lucky that we've all had that experience of playing drum kit as well. Yeah. I don't I think there's a lot of percussionists though that would probably do that. No, no, no. I've, been, I've seen I've yeah. seen quite a few percussionists who who do um, play for the sake of playing things, and it's all too busy. Yeah, you know, it's all really busy. But um, I think the relationship you have with the drummer as a percussionist is much like any other relationship. It has to be, yeah. you know, mutually respectful. You have to know how to sort of navigate yourself if you have an argument or you come into, you yeah. know, mm, and every, yeah. everybody's got an ego, mm, so yeah. you have mm. to kind of be aware of that and yeah. just be. Sensitive and keep and that in check. And keep that in check, yeah. yeah. And just get along with people. Really. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try to. Mm. I mean, I mean, as far as far as as far as um, setting up tracks and sounds, you know, uh, listening to the people that I listen to, obviously, um, when I was when I was growing up, you know, people like uh, my great friend Louis Conti and Bashiri Johnson and Ayeto, you know, it was amazing. And Paulino da Costa, it was amazing how they would colour. Uh, colour the sounds and then what, what became really weird to me was percussive being uh, melody as well the first time I, I sort of saw Minnow, our friend Minnow Sinou yeah. play yeah. who just um, really the way he played the, the wave drum, the Korg wave drum and, and, and behave, became really creative yeah. like that and was playing the, all those voices and um, and then playing underneath it, so we'd set up the sequence and then play along with it. I mean, that for me, when I first saw that, was like it was like nothing I'd ever seen, you mm. know. For me, me personally, and I think uh, I think that as a melody, obviously, with a lot of it in Indian music, you know, that that's uh, when tabla the voices and the and the and the sounds. To a point, there's melody, but I mean, there's more, you know, like Miles Conga playing. Yes. You know, I find it very. You know, I think most. One of the most melodic players, actually, really interesting yeah. melodic parts that yeah, he, yeah. that he comes up with. With tabla charang, you've got you know you can yeah. play melody to a point. Yes. I, you know, in a way, there's kind of a melody between the harmonics and the different notes on on tabla mm. to a, to a, to a degree. You almost play uh, when you play. Hopefully, hopefully, I use the right term. Let's just go with a, a raga. There's like a whole journey. There's a whole language these long beautiful passages which i don't know how you retain for a start yeah that's incredible yeah it's a lot i mean that's a lot of melody yeah because it's because it's phonetics as well you mm. learn with the phonetics there's an, there was a, a experiment done with maths where they did a lot of maths um that with similar level students but one was color coded and the other wasn't and the group that were color coded won uh, you know much higher marks in the exams oh, right. and the theory was that it would go into both sides of the brain at the same time and similar yeah, researches have been done um, with phonetics and and rhythm okay with the idea being that it goes into both sides of yeah. the brain and I, yeah. i've tried it with with uh, some education of speaking a rhythmic passage so even if someone's learning bongos or a, a non-indian instrument yeah to to teach them a rhythmic passage with syllables and yeah, then a yeah. similar level student without syllables yeah. the one without syllables takes that much longer yeah. to get it yeah. Really interesting. yeah 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 you know, really yeah I mean I found that even just simple things like cascara you know dun, 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 dun. I like percussion I don't like singing I like percussion I don't like and yeah. they, they instantly get it's it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, 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 it's very yeah. true. Because yeah. yeah. you've got things to, you know, things, something to hook it on. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'm sure somebody yeah. said that, you know, if you can sing it, you can say it, you can play it, you will get there and it won't take that long, yeah. And it's actually with Tabla, there are some things, I mean, some things are so fast that you can't mm. really say them anyway. Yeah, yeah. But, um, 
it actually there's a correlation between being able to to speak it and being able to play it. There are certain <laughs> things that if I can't speak it, I can't play it. Not necessarily rhythmic beat, but technically. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. that's really interesting. Yeah. I still haven't worked that that one out. Yeah. So I can't play it. <laughs> <laughs>